Testing volume, one, two, three. Let's try this again. Testing volume, one, two, three. Okay, should be good enough. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to PA's Perpetual Testing. Today we're looking at you and your companion cube. In which, presumably, I'm just going to be walking through this test chamber with my companion cube. Keeping it with me, through thick and thin, making sure that I take it to every test. Alright, so, first things first. Uh, no commentary yesterday, so sorry about that again. Uh, just a bit of a, uh, bit of a tough spot. Didn't get to record my episode early like I usually like to do, so I was uh, rather forced to take desperate measures, record an episode completely without commentary. Uh, which really, to be quite honest, aren't that desperate of measures to be. Oh, okay, I was wondering how I was gonna get the cube out of here. To be completely honest, aren't actually that desperate of measures, but eh, what are you gonna do? So... As you can see, this map just seems to be me using the cube to solve various puzzles, up to and including getting through small areas. I never actually knew that this was how the sideways panels work, though that's actually quite interesting to see one in action on the floor here. Oh, no, come back. Where'd it go? Alright, so cube down there, and I've got an- oh, a sphere, well, no. All immersion within the test chamber is broken now, I mean... Before, I just had to get a cube. Now I'm expected to know a sphere, too? That's huh, terrible. Okay, I think that I'm going to have to fire the laser this way, probably. I place blue there and orange, let's say, here. That would certainly work, but there's not really much I can... Oh, it gave me an our laser cube. Okay. Good times. So now what? What do I have to do? Do I have to activate all of them? Is that it? Or... Is there some greater trick to all this? I mean, I could probably activate most of these at this point. Easiest thing to do would be just to activate this and this alone, but... I don't think that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So let's see, how would I go about activating everything here? What if I fired a laser this way and then over here fired it through there? I'd have a portal there, I could set up a portal there, it would go through there, but it wouldn't go to the end, which doesn't really allow me to do everything that I want to do. What if I just forget that one for now? What if I just place a portal, say, there? Bam, suddenly lasers. Okay, I accidentally activated the wrong laser grid there. Culminating in me completely failing to get anything done, but what about now? What if I... Oh, great. Okay, so there's something I need to figure out while I'm still in this test chamber, and I have no idea what it is. Just a bit weird? That wasn't there before, was it? No, so now I've got three laser cubes to activate, presumably, all of the areas with. No, that, that can't be it. I mean, what am I supposed to do here? Is there a way to deactivate... This grid? I have to activate the triangle. Alright. Oh no, wait. Uh, so line, x, square, dot, circle. Or half circle. Moon. Line, square. Line, moon, dot, x, square. The x wasn't part of it, was it? No, oh, the X is part of it. Okay, so I need to activate all of them. But this raises the problem of the fact that one of these is going to be despawned the moment I activate the X. Okay, so what if I keep it there? Where'd it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, good. What if I keep it there and fire this over there? That's the one that activates that cube, and then I can grab this, pull it backwards, and fire it there to activate all five. I should now have a sphere outside... Which should allow me to get through- ooh? Oh, it destroyed itself. Brilliant. Doesn't matter. Companion cube is now going to travel over there, activate the door, allowing me to get through. Okay, so some actual tests, uh, mostly laser redirection, but I don't know, I've always kind of liked line of sight tests. It's just a- uh, not just in Portal, pretty much in anything. Any sort of test where you have- what the hell? Oh, you're kidding me. All of them? Or do I just need the one? 
I think I just need one, so let's go grab one, shall we? Uh, which one do I want? You. You'll do fine. Any sort of test where you're just kind of... Technically given the line of sight that you need to complete things, but not told exactly how it's going to work. That's that's usually a good test in my mind. So what is this now? Activating to pull companion cube to me? Alright. Oh man, and it's Saturday, so the new episode of uh, Attack on Titan comes out today. Gotta admit, I'm not a big fan of the enemies, but as I mentioned, that show, that is something special. Yeah, I mean, really, it's just absolutely fantastic, the whole thing. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, I see what I'm supposed to do here. I'm supposed to be activating the gel, but to be able to activate the gel, I have to be able to get to the button. To be able to get to the button, I have to activate the excursion funnel, which will take me up to the button. And then once I press this, it st should start shooting propulsion gel everywhere. Just toss my blue portal there so I can fall. I need to grab this. There doesn't seem to be a timer, so I'm assuming that's active permanently now. Let's place my blue portal there and my orange portal there. I don't want to get it all over the com cube, companion cube, so I'm just going to put it over there. Uh, what about a little bit... Oh, wrong one. Blue portal over there, so I don't accidentally deactivate it. Yeah, Attack on Titan definitely getting interesting, but I have to keep take care to keep myself away from, you know, all them, all them spoilers. I mean, just about any series when you're entering late or where there's an R medium that got to it a little bit earlier than you did, there are going to be spoilers that you'll have to keep away from, which is pretty much always sad times, but even so, I mean, it's just, it's, it's how I first looked at it, so can't really see too much of a disadvantage to it. And what is the cube activating here? Does the cube just... It stayed activated there. I didn't imagine that, did I? It was activated before I put the cube on there for some reason. Oh, whatever. I think I should be able to fly across now. So let's place my portals over there so I'm not about to accidentally run into any of them and fly our way across. Perfect. Good. All right. Portal will surface here and back over there where the cube is. So let's grab that and get through. I really don't know how that was active. I somehow managed to... Oh, dear. I'm going to have to drop it in the pit, aren't I? Ah, uh, Portal 1 memories. Goodbye, cube. It's been fun. Right, so actually not a bad test. Pretty entertaining, had a couple of decent puzzles. I do like line of sight puzzles, as I mentioned in the middle of the test, but never really elaborated on, just because there's something cool about having to figure out the exact angle that allow you to shoot it through a particular set of things. Just because line of sight really does provide you with one of the best options for being able to create a puzzle with multiple solutions, but ultimately only one intended one. Or maybe even multiple intended solutions, but the actual physics of the whole deal can get just a little bit iffy since there's only ever really one line that you can put along unless you have say a portal creation device in which case you're going to be able to create lines all over the walls to to wherever you want to create portals in the first place and then you can just shoot it through the wall to a completely different point in time at which point it'll keep the angle that it kept when it was going into the portal which means that if it was going to portal at a 45 degree angle to the right and then you place it on a wall to your right it's actually going to be going around at pretty much a 180 degree angle from the new you get what i mean it's really cool, and if someone can figure out how to do a good one, it's usually really fantastic. Uh, other ones, they just think, well, I'll just place, you know, these things all over the ground, but someday, someday I know I'll find a really, really cool one of those. Anyway, on to the next test chamber. Alright, test chamber two, Faith in the Fling. By the way, the Cave Johnson quotes at the beginning of the test chambers have stopped. I think I, uh... I think I finally exhausted him. Only took about 80 days. Okay, so immediately... I don't want to step on this. And I actually do want to step on this, but not quite yet. Uh, portable surface, that should work. No idea? I... How the hell was I supposed to know that flung that way? Oh boy, we're in one of those maps. Okay, so long story short, um... The circle here is pretty indicative of here, but you have no way of knowing that this is the one that leads to, and when there are three different aerial faith plates in the area, there's little to no way to verify that you're actually going to be safe while you're flying, which is kind of a disadvantage to the whole situation, but you know what, that's acceptable at the very least. I'm going to go ahead and put this here since this will prevent me from dying. Also, the fact that you can die from a simple fling, if you make a mistake like that, is a little bit silly, but overall not entirely unexpected. What is this? 
Am I supposed to fling the gel somewhere? That's great. Top notch. Absolutely fantastic. Seriously, what the hell am I expe expected to do? What the fuck? Oh my. Okay, I think I've spotted what I'm supposed to do with the gel. A <laughs> low fling platform. Oh, and there's water here. What does this activate? Let's, uh, let's check, shall we? First off, activates tilted platform. Second off, activates doors. And is that it? Okay, tilted platform and doors. I can dig it. Because there were only three lines going out of this thing, right? Yeah, okay, good. By the way, dots leading to what it controls. Great, fantastic, perfect. Keep doing that. And for some reason, a lack of conversion gel on this surface. Sure, you know what, whatever. I don't really care too much about that. You want to make sure we can't put conversion gel on the surface? That's okay by me. Just gotta make sure I aim for the portal and fly across safely. There we go, alright. Now, I probably could have also fired conversion gel over here and then used the portal gun to create a portal over here and then just went through that hole and this hole and that would have been fine. But, I mean, why bother with something like that? Also, turrets here. Only purpose to be killed. Why would you do something like that? There's no test there. I'm just blowing up turrets. It, okay, which I suppose, you know, gratifying in its own right, but... Okay, so that button stops it. What does this button do? Nothing visible from this location? I mean, it says it activates square. What is square? Square above? Oh, it's uh, repulsion gel. Square was not particularly well uh, documented. Or not documented. What am I saying? Not particularly well... Oh, shit. Wording. Can't think of the wording. I might as well let it fall there. I mean, hey, look, tiny amount of propulsion gel. Go me. But for now, it appears that there's at least something that I'll be able to activate. I can just fire a portal here and here, allowing myself to fire at the thing through the wall, which is just about the most basic laser redirection you can get, but sure, we'll roll with it, whatever. Okay, and now I see what I'm supposed to do with this. Activate that, flows propulsion gel that way. And then stop it there, falls to the ground, fully covered surface. Brilliant. Okay, now if I also place there and there, I should be able to fling myself. And I'm going to bring the cube with because there's never really a disadvantage to taking a cube with you, especially considering this one isn't doing anything at this time. So let's see how fast we can go. What the shit? Oh, I have to place a portal. Okay, so I don't even need to fly with this, with this thing. I just need to place a portal in the meantime. Okay, so. Fly into the air. Blue portal over there. Done. Boom. Okay, orange portal's over here. Take the cube. Leave. Simple enough. And naturally, there's going to be an emancipation grid. Okay, so what else is there? Absolutely nothing. Fantastic. Okay, so exceedingly simple test chamber with a little bit of funny business in the very first one regarding the open fling platforms and the fact that one of them seemed to fling you into a deadly field for no particular reason other than here's a deadly field. Then you had to grab a cube out of the air which was constantly spawning and dying. I kind of like the, um, I mean if you're going to do the whole thing with uh, the surfaces, the aerial faith plates, you might as well have put an aerial faith plate directly underneath the cube in the first place. Instead of constantly despawning and respawning a cube, why not just have it bounce? It also gives us a bit more reliable way to document when it's going to be coming out. I mean, it's not a very big thing, but it, it's just got that tempo to it. And it's kind of a nice touch to a lot of test chambers that a lot of people put in there that I think is a positive influence on the whole effect of it. Uh, overall, though, hmm. I mean, it's not bad. It's just not particularly complex. The turrets really didn't have a point. You could fly into the air, sure, but there really wasn't much you could do with it, if that makes any sense. And then the last couple of test chambers, square wasn't completely obvious, but that's only because I didn't look up, so that's not really a disadvantage of yours so much as it is a disadvantage of my inability to look at the situation around me. Uh, but the faith plates, I can see where you were going with it. I can definitely see where you were going with the whole thing, but the it just seemed a bit contrived. For some of the puzzles, other parts were perfectly fine. Conversion gel on the floor, creating a brand new platform from which I can portal fling, perfectly okay. Plus, you actually... I mean, while you did place conversion gel... You placed it in such a manner that, you know, 
it was very clear that here's a fling because there's nowhere for you to place this conversion gel. That said, instead of placing conversion gel, why not just have a that button say flip a floor panel so it's now a portable surface? I mean, you certainly could. Yeah, I get it that you want to have the conversion gel on the floor, but it accomplished the same thing that a flippable floor panel could have. Unless the conversion gel onto the exit was the solution you intended, in which case, sorry for breaking that. But overall, not a bad test chamber. Uh, just solid, just not particularly outstanding. But I think that's about all the time we have for this episode, so as always, thanks for watching, I'll see you guys tomorrow, and this has been PA.